After the wort has been aerated, we can pitch our yeast. Dry yeast has the advantage of being manufactured in a nutrient-enriched state and doesn't require as much oxygen as liquid yeast packages do. One packet of yeast is more than sufficient for most two and a half gallon batches. If this were a much stronger beer or a larger batch, such as five or 10 gallons, then you would need to use two or even three packages to supply enough yeast. Just pour in your yeast, give it a stir, and put on the lid and airlock. Fill the airlock to the line with water after moving it to your fermentation location. I am going to put this fermenter in the back bedroom that has a stable temperature of about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 C. It will take about 12 to 24 hours for the yeast to reproduce enough to begin fermentation. And then you will see rapid bubbling in the airlock from the carbon dioxide they give off. Fermentation will continue for several days and the amount of time will vary depending on the particular yeast strain and the temperature. Maintaining a stable temperature is important. If the room temperature drops more than 5 degrees Fahrenheit or 3 degrees Celsius, the yeast may quit working. If the temperature rises a few degrees during fermentation, that is okay. In general, it is better to start cool and finish warm. For ales, this means starting around 65 and finishing at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. For lagers, it means starting at 50 and finishing at 55 or 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but the actual temperatures depend on the particular yeast strain. At the end of fermentation, the airlock will stop bubbling, but don't do anything yet. The beer still needs a maturation period when the yeast will clean up some of the fermentation byproducts in the beer and finally flocculate and settle out. As a general rule of thumb, give the beer the same amount of time to maturate as it took to ferment. I generally allow one week for fermentation and one week for maturation before I will consider bottling. 